Hello and welcome to the Lawrence Plays channel for episode 2 of uh, Mark Plays Pyanodons. And Pyanodons, as a quick refresher, is the really, really overcomplicated Factorio mod. The one that adds in massive, massive numbers of different recipes and, and different uh, stages to every recipe. Lots of different resources and just, just generally lots. Um, and so, we're, against all of that, Mark has now just managed to make, at uh, just a hair under 29 hours in, he has made his first simple circuit board, so essentially green circuits, and here they are up here. He's got a, uh, a, a chip shooter machine that's taking in lots of ingredients and then producing these simple circuit boards, which he now has 15, so yeah, well done there. And those take quite a lot of stuff on the input, so you need to make um, copper zinc batteries, you need to make ceramic capacitors, air core inductors, high power resistors, printer circuit board substrates, vacuum tubes and solder, so I mean that's that's a kind of reasonable amount, reasonable set of things to put into a uh, on, onto, onto a circuit board. Although I think we've kind of moved away from vacuum tubes a little bit in the real world. But maybe he's going, maybe he'll get up to more uh, complicated, intricate uh, transistors and things in the future. And so that requires lots and lots of stuff to make it. So solder, as you'd expect, requires lead and tin. So those coming in here being made into, into solder. Um, then if you get wire and what are these? Are these iron sticks. These are indeed iron sticks. From those you can make. Then there you can make the air core inductors. So, Yes, yeah. I suppose you wrap copper around an iron stick. You can make a, you can make an inductor. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not sure where it's an air core if it's got an iron stick in the middle. But let's not worry about that. Uh, co copper zinc batteries require cellulose, zinc, copper, and saline water. Lovely. And those, those that seems to be chugging through quite nicely. Well, there's a bit of a shortage of saline water. We'll have a look into that in a, in a moment. Oh no, that that, well, that here comes some. <laughs> Then you've got the capacitors and the resistors that are being made in electronics factories out of, again, more of the exotic materials. We've got some ceramics and um, and tin going in here, and glass, and is that, co is that coal? No, coke, to make the resistors. Okay. And over here we're making the vacuum tubes, and that requires copper and iron to make the tube, and then a, va and then a pump over here to make the vacuum. So, <laughs> this is slightly weird in that you're pumping vacuum from this machine into this machine. But, um, I can sort of see, I mean, it's sort of it's kind of backwards, but it makes sense given the way that Factorio works. So I'm, I'm sort of okay with the idea of pumping vacuum from one place to another. It's um, it's a bit like saying yes, we're going to transfer the cold from here to here, um, but you know, let, 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 let's, let's not split hairs. It's it, it, it's close enough, and it, it's pretty much accurate, even if the arrow technically points the wrong way. And then over here, we're using a high pressure furnace to turn coke into graphite uh, rods. So that seems to make a reasonable amount of sense. And over here, there seems to be some sort of threshing machine. It's a wood processing unit, so it's taking in taking in wood and turning it into into raw fibre. Okay, and that's go. Ah, right. And then over here, that's going up to be mixed with um, the treated wood, some sap, and some formaldehyde. Jeez. Um, I'm going to try and get away from just reading through all the recipes, but there's so much stuff going on here. Wow. Ooh, I like I like the sound effects and the way they're linked with this machine. Actually, that sounds really good. You can hear. You can. Act, it feels like you can hear the log going through it. That's that's awesome. Um, oh, and the motor moving to put it over, back there over here. That's some excellent sound design. I approve of that. Um, and over here, we are bringing in um, we're bringing in creosote, apparently, to, uh, to 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 mix with the wood. How do you, how, what, I don't even know how you make creosote in real life. Um, apparently it's done up oop, up over here. I don't know. I'm, at this point, I'm not quite sure if I'm following the right cables. Uh, pipes still. Yes, over here. Tar so you're turning naphthalene. Oh god, this is getting angel bobian. Um, so we've got we're bringing in uh, tar and steam over here to break it into middle oil, creosote, anthracene oil, and pitch. Jeez. Um, the pitch at least can be fed into here with steam and turned into into coke, hydrogen, and light oil. Um, this is. This is this is guess this is this is almost Angel Bob's level of petrochem shenaniganery, um, but it's all going to places. The the light oil seems to be being fed over here and going into this machine, or it's, oh no, uh, where it's being consumed to make the glass. That's fair enough. It's being used as a fuel source over there. Um, we're then bringing in the middle oil and turning it into naphthalene of various different. Sorry, we're turning it into light oil, carbolic oil, and naphthalene oil. So light oil, oh jeez. Um, I wonder if, if uh, Mark is actually using up most of these byproducts. This one, actually, that one's going in here and being turned into creosote as well. Okay, so you can turn carbolic oil or naphthalene oil into it. So it's only the other one of those, the um, uh, the light oil, that needs to be disposed of. And we've already seen where that goes. Okay, so that's not quite as bad as it initially looked. Um, does make me wonder where you get the tar from, though. Um, 
stuff comes from over here somewhere. There's various organic things happening over here. So okay, here we're chopping down, we're chopping up trees to make coal, or we're processing wood to make coal, uh, coal gas, coal, tar, and iron. Oxide. Fine, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm not going to spend the, the whole episode following those things. Oh, I probably am actually. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so we're, we're making all of this stuff, and that requires lots and lots of different metals. And so, the, the, actually, one of the most appalling things about this is that we still—I well, say we—he still doesn't have splitters. We're still having to, we're having to use these inserters to uh, these filter inserters to uh, to grab things off the belt and pass them up onto onto another belt to, to, uh, like like this. Um, and that, that's how he's doing splitters off his bus down here. But that does show that he's got a main bus up and running now. It's a fairly small main bus, sure, but it is up and running. And then maybe these simple circuit boards will then get passed down here and onto the, onto the bus for, uh, for whatever they're needed for later. But, then, but that means over here we've now got this array of furnace arrays. It's an array of arrays. It's, it's sort of it's, Factorio is basically programming, right? So <laughs> we're going, going from over here. We are making aluminium and copper and iron and more iron and bricks which isn't really a metal but kind of counts because he smelted up in the same sort of way and lead and zinc and cope cope nickel and tin sorry is this t zinc Z yeah zinc and and and, and tin um, and they're all being fed out onto a bus so we can start doing stuff with them along with the uh, that saline water we spotted earlier and whatever whatever nonsense goes into this pipe and as before, we've still got the same problem with the um, with with the with the system over here. Output still outputting a certain amount of ash. So he's got some ash catchers on here that are then passing it out to be disposed of on the ash disposal belt. Um, because despite being thirty almost thirty hours in, which is you know time time enough to have launched about your first four rockets, well, or to have launched a rocket from scratch four times over, uh, still no splitters, no 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 furnaces that don't out that, that don't burn fuel on the way in and don't produce ash on the way out, and of course all of these furnaces then require these um, this elaborate system of inserters to get to get them fueled and now the two of them are easily fast enough they're not ripping through the fuel particularly quickly but it's still it you look at that and you go oh my goodness don't, why don't you have splitters yet and and the reason he doesn't have splitters yet is because they are um, oh no no he has research splitters he could start using splitters oh but they need simple circuit boards to make them and he's only just made those so he could, in theory, make 15 splitters, but uh, he might have other priorities for simple circuit boards. I don't know. Or he might actually, at this point, he might just be going, oh, for goodness sake, give me splitters. So, um, yeah, well well done on being on having research splitters. I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't noticed that until I just looked then. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, all that ash that needs to then be disposed of, that flows up round here. and Oh, and then he goes into these ash processing machines where it's turned into rust and uh, coal dust and soot, and then the soot gets reprocessed and turned into metals and then back into ash as well, and some of that ash gets fed back in, and oh my goodness. And yeah, so down here we've got this system where the um, various different ores are split out like that with a, uh, a white list and a black list inserter, and then the, the so the, the zinc went down here to be passed down into this system, and then the, 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 the iron just carries on to be, yeah, and so on. So, interestingly, all of those, a lot of all of the zinc that's been created so far, by the looks of it, has come from ash processing. That's quite impressive. So he hasn't needed to go out and actually tap a zinc mine yet. This reminds me quite a lot, actually, of the um, of, of the core mining in space exploration, where you have a system that just runs. Now, okay, granted, in this in this case, it's running on byproducts rather than just running on the ground, but it is producing outputs, stead a steady output of all the different things you, you all the basic ores you might you might need. I also noticed that the rust that's being produced here is also then being fed off to a, a, a furnace over here where you can cook the rust straight up into iron, so back into iron plates, so that's quite nice. And that's going to give you a little bit extra of, um, of that as well. So, so far, uh, 340, not too bad. So yes, metals, they're going, they're going pretty well by the looks of it. We've still got the, oh, we've still got the little um, area over here of where the... Um, the first science pack of putting of putting plants in a box was running, so that, that's still uh, it's still there and still available. But it's obviously it's run out of something. What have we run out of here? We've run out we've run out of stone bricks. But chuck some of there and some them in there, and I'm sure it'll all kick in and start working again nicely, and you can get get a bit more through. Um, and now this probably is just asking to be ripped up and put back in again over over here on the end of the bus. But um, as long as he's got yes, he has got wood on the bus, so it'll be fairly straightforward to to just make a copy of this and put it in over here to allow allow those packs to be made off the bus and then you won't have to worry about hand feeding all the machines. Um, and then from there you can, I guess, um, feed, feed them up and maybe, maybe move the labs as well. I wonder what the next science pack takes. Has he even researched the next science pack yet? Here we go. This is the this is this appears to be the next. So, so who, he hasn't even researched science pack one yet. But we even so science pack one requires you to have some automation science to create it. And then that's um, 
glassware and sub basic substrates. Okay. I don't know what's going to be required to make that, but the, the glassware alone requires rubber stoppers and molten glass, and the rubber stoppers require cold and latex, and the latex requires I don't know what, and the <laughs> and the sub basic substrate. Well, is, is that in here anywhere? It must be. It must be in here somewhere, but I don't know which of these things it's in. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Basic substrates. That's cellulose, incubated petri dishes, and moss. Great. Well, he's clearly got the cellulose because that went into something else. The petri dishes and the moss. Who knows? We'll uh, we'll we'll need to we'll need to look into that at some point. So that's that's this bit of the the factory. There's a bot flying around being weird. Um, never mind. It's because I'm in God mode and it's confusing it. Um, yeah. So we've got the we've got the smelting going on over here, and then we've got this whole area here, which is with its entire entire purpose in life being to make the uh, the minute the uh, the first tier of circuit boards. And we've got an area here that's building up the um, nuts and bolts essentially. These the, the little bits of basic um, basic bits and pieces, small parts I described us here, and they consist of um, bolts and gears and cables and so on and one second, I'm going to deal with that bot. Smack. There we go. It's not following me around anymore. So that's this part of the base. Uh, over here, well, we've got a massive, a massive organic area. So this is this is presumably where all the wood is coming from, and then it's pouring down here onto the bus. Yes, it is. So I am actually still talking about the things that are feeding the bus. But over here, we've got this. I found really quite intriguing. We've got, so we've got this sort of forestry area. So you, you've um, got what do you got? <laughs> I like the animations here. You've got a little. Uh, little drone helicopter thing flying around uh, watering the plants and then a machine here that's chopping them down and then a stomp stompy robots that are going out and collecting the chopping it down and collecting the wood that's awesome um, I suspect these this this one factory area is significantly higher tech than anything else that's um, been that's been researched in the in the game so far but never mind let's let's ignore the ridiculousness of that how does this thing work so it takes in ash so this is another another place for using it up so I guess it's not all going to get turned into um, uh, in, 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 into into the ores anymore. This is another place that uses ash, so I guess it's not all going to get turned into ore anymore. Uh, we've got seedlings being brought in, which is fair enough. You grow the seedlings, and those are produced in a in, in, in a botanical nursery down here. You make you make you see make grow grow tree seeds and some moss to grow them in, I suppose, and some water, and you get seedlings out. Fair enough. Um, and then the seeds will presumably come from somewhere, yes, and then the moss comes from, moss just, well, seeds come from wood which turns into lots of seeds, that, that seems to be fine. You can turn, you can turn a piece, you can turn five wood into four seeds, hmm, but then, and then the, and then a seed, one seed becomes three seedlings, and then three seedlings become six logs. Okay, so that is, it is net positive, oh, and then one log. Four logs become twenty wood. So yeah, okay, that's very, very net positive. But the thing about this that struck me as interesting is, is if we take a look at one of these, um, at one of these forestries, you you put you grow a tree and then you can put it in here as <laughs> I like the description. There, it's a tree. Um, you can then put a tree into here as essentially as a speed module. So where, so where? Hang on, wait a minute. This isn't this isn't working how I thought it was. Where do you get trees from? Ah, I see. Over here. So this this botanical nursery, you put in a planter box and a seedling, and it grows you a tree, a tree, a Mark One tree. Obviously, you can get better trees in the future, and those can be put into the forestries. So the idea is, you fill it up with seed trees and seedlings, um, and then the more trees you put in, the faster it works. So you can just grow a seedling from the ground, um, but if you put in all these trees you get a 40% speed boost with each one and I'm guessing that yes this is a minus 900 this is a negative pollution thing so the more trees you put in here also that pulls out pollution so you can start it off with your, your first seedlings you can just chuck them in here and they'll grow slowly or you can grow them into trees first over here and put them in and they act as speed modules that's really weird a weird way of doing it but I kind of I kind of like it because it's, it's interesting and different and I've seen so many things in Factorio are just Take some inputs, get some outputs. It doesn't almost doesn't matter what the inputs and outputs are. You can just follow through the recipes, and it's it's sort of the same thing over and over. So when something that's a bit different, like this, or having a, a feedback loop of stuff, or having loops with lots and lots of byproducts, or or arcospheres, uh, which we won't talk about any more than that. When you find something different like that, then I find it quite interesting. It gives you a, it gives that extra little bit of flavour, and um, yeah, it's it, it's something a bit a bit more. Um, anyway, so that's that's growing all of his trees over here. We're also making ooh. Um, red goop over here. What, what is the red goop? The red goop is agar. Ah, uh, that'll be to go into the petri dishes for goodness knows what. But he's also growing alg see oh, uh, seaweed seaweed over here. Seaweed mark one. So that can then be put back into here to grow uh, as the speed modules for it. So in this case, it is just the same thing. You grow. So you start. You start the machine running. And then the first few you grow, you put put into here. So in this in this this case, it's a bit like the Coverex weight in Vanilla Factorio in that. 
you, you, when you start off, your machines are going to run slowly and not produce anything. You need to leave them running for a little while to generate all of the stuff they need to get going at full speed. The difference being with this one, if you're desperate, you can just take some of them out straight away. I suppose that's the case with uranium as well, because you can take it straight out of the um, initial centrifuges, but if you're prepared to wait for 40 of it to get together, then you can get it out a lot faster by doing the Covarex process. Here, you, you can take it straight out if you want, or you can put some the, the first 10, 10 or however many there is, back into here to get it to run faster, and you get a 100% speed boost to each one of those. So this is going to be an incredibly long process. It's a 50 second crafting time, and a, a, a 0.01 speed machine so it's going to take 500 seconds uh that's just like eight and a half minutes to make the first one but then if you keep putting them back in it'll get faster and faster and faster until now it's running at 11 times its normal speed and it only it takes a mere presumably 45 seconds or so to produce one to produce one so it's uh, still slow but it's a lot less slow and those can be fed up here to mid dagar and I, whatever oh and then over here as well i think was it there's something along here that required it. Oh, no, it required moss as well, didn't it? Yeah. Then the next thing I discovered was these. And these are weird, not just to the sounds they're making, but because they're, it's weird alien life stuff. So here we've got... The, these are um, moon drops we're growing here. So you take in a moon drop seed, give it water, it turns into a moon drop. Fine. Um, and then pass around here. You can put it back into the nursery up here and then turn a moon drop... Uh, turn several moon drops back into moon drop seeds, but to sort of a, a net positive. So you get you're getting more out than you put in. Uh, now, when I was looking at this, I'm a little bit unsure about sort of the the uh, about about the prioritisation here. So, so we've got we're definitely prioritised by filling all these boxes up with the seeds to make sure we've got um, we've got a decent stack of seeds here. So these machines will keep running, and they're the first ones on the on the output here. So they'll get first first dibs to grab the seeds as they come past. Then we'll put the moon drops on here, but the problem is this this is a circular recipe, so the moon drops, f five moon drops go in and two, and then a chance of a little bit more come out again, as well as the seeds. So, um, yeah, they're being fed out here and then back in again, but the, the weird thing about this is he's, he's got them being fed in as the lower priority, so he's using these ones up first, and then using the ones that come out of here afterwards. So that means you'll get... Um, these, the ones in, in this machine won't get you... The, the, this machine isn't running at the moment because it's got too many in there because it can't put them out because this is full. So these are now going to run until all of these seeds have been used up. And then, finally, this will be able to dump a few out. No, but then these are going to block up. I think this is going to break because these are going to... This is going to jam up with uh, moon drops on the output. Yeah, this is, I don't think this is going to work. I think these the, the, this output needs to be a higher priority than the input. So that's... But that's a, a, a relatively easy fix. It's just I mean, put it coming in from a different, different, a different angle. That's, so yeah, that can, can be sorted, but needs to be. Then over here, we've got this one where you're doing. We've got moon drop seeds, and you're, you're, you're somehow you're processing them into methane. So maybe you maybe you grow them in carbon dioxide, and it kills them off, but in the process releases some methane. I, uh, who knows? Um, but that way, you do, yeah, you don't get them back out again from the seeds. But you do, you do get some carbon dioxide. You do get some methane out, so you can then feed that down this pipe here. And that's fed all the way over here, <laughs> up up into up into here to be to be turned to be turned into formaldehyde. That's, that's needed to make the formica in order to make the border. Yes, yeah, so you, you can see you can see why all this is is running over over here in order to get that. Also got a nice big sap extractor, and this I thought was quite interesting as well. So you get a couple of sap trees, you put them in the sap extractor, but they go in sort of sort of as modules, and then you produce the um, sap from those. Um, so does that mean these have a natural... If I go over here and I take these out... Um, yeah, there we go. There's no there's no seeds in it now, so it's, it's flashing an alert. So that means the machine presumably can't work because I've taken I've taken the trees out so that there aren't any trees for it to extract, extract the sap from. Put them back in and then it can it can run, it can pull the sap out of them and, 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 and there you go. Um, and, there's, and then there's got, he's got this sort of botanical nursery area up here where we're turning, um, we're making the, the the first moon drop because you notice this, this this system down here, it was circular. You turn seeds into moon drops and moon drops into seeds. Great, but you need to get one of those from somewhere before you can get it running. So over here we've got a, a nursery where you can turn um, a petri dish, so you can make those, and a planter box and a moon drop codex and some water into into your first moon drop. Um, now, you, I think you, by the looks of it, you only need to run this once, and then you've got your moon drop, and you can go off and deal with that. So, what, what, what's the codex? Moon drop codex is inductors, glass, and tin cable. Um, interesting. I'm not quite sure why that gives you a plant, but 
Okay, I mean it needs to come from somewhere. It's better than the it's better than the um, the Angel Bob's version, which is go out into the world and find a very specific type of tree. That was that was a pain. <laughs> um, similarly, with the uh, with the sap trees, those come from planter box and sap seeds, and sap seeds come from sap. This seems like a circular recipe as well. Maybe you can get maybe you can get your first sap out of a. Uh, no, it comes from a sap extractor. Sap seeds come from. Sap seed, sap tree comes from sap seed. Hmm. I don't know where you get your first sap from. There must there must be a way. Maybe it maybe maybe you maybe there's a small chance of getting some sap out of this tree processing going on up here. But no, after a little bit of poking around, I'm honestly not sure where you get the first sap from. But um Marcus clearly managed it, so I'll uh, I'll not worry about it too much. Uh so that covers quite a lot of the um, the stuff that's been going on here. Let's have a look at the map. So you can see you can see the the smelting area along here, and the main bus he's got started, and the circuit production over here, and the miscellaneous little bits and pieces production here. Uh, we talked about the all the all the uh, botanicals going on over here, uh, and then oh the all these blue squares up here. These this is this is power generation. So um, apparently Pyanodons comes with some um, reasonably nice uh, turbines that look like fish. So that's um, that's fun, and these seem these produce. Um, Half a, half a megawatt each, that's, that's not a bad amount of power to be getting from something that is completely free and just sits there generating power. I am intrigued that it seems to say low power on them though, that's um, uh, odd. Maybe, maybe that just means they're not producing as much power as they are, are, are capable of. Um, yeah, so he's got a total of 73 megawatts available, he's using 12 of them, so yeah, loads, of, loads and loads of spare power. Um, this oh yeah this is this is the uh, petrochem area I was talking about earlier. We've got a little bit of emergency power generation down here, which seems to be running for some reason. I'm puzzled as to why why he's got uh, maybe not maybe it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of coal being fed in here. Given that these machines aren't running, is he taking the steam away for something else? No. Oh, oh oh I see. It's just filling up the steam buffers in the um, in the boiler. So they've they've obviously been running recently. Maybe some maybe there's something that uses a lot of power kicked in earlier. In fact, we can we can tell. So if we open this up and go back over, looking over the last sort of ten. No, actually, no. These 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 haven't been running for for for, for thirty nine minutes. So um, I don't know. But we do see there's a big big drop off in the amount of power that's been being used recently. And you can see here as the as the tur as the um, the turbines are being built, and, and that pull, pull, the, pull the power usage, pull the power generation away from the steam engine. So, yep, that's going. That looks to be going quite well. As you can see, we've got lots of lots of mines set up scattered around the around the map, ranging from standard copper mines where you, uh, well, this one doesn't have any fuel coming in, so that's not working. Um, but it potentially could be if we if we if we supply. In fact, it seems like we have had fuel coming along here because some of it's been passed over this way, but there's, it's clearly run out. Uh, whereas over here we have um, these are the uh, the fluid mining drills which need a supply of acetylene, and, that, and that's run out. So these have stopped producing. This is this is lead over here. Uh, got a coal supply over here, but apparently it's not being split off to go this way, even though there's a desperate need for fuel over there. Um, and then various other other mining areas around. I, uh, here, here's one that's actually working because it only takes steam uh, to do to do the, the mining of the. Uh, is that tin? Yes, that's tin. Uh, so that's coming out quite happily. And even so, we've still got a, a steady stream of uh, soot coming out. There's an iron mine over here, which again running quite happily. Except over, here, I noticed over here. We've got too much. Uh, the fuel has been fed up on both sides of the belts along here, so it's um, it's it's blocking where the soot needs to go, and that and that's stopping the uh, stopping the, um, the the drills from running. But uh, there is does seem to be a plentiful supply of of iron ore coming out of here, and that's going to be a fairly easy fix because it looks like everything is built correctly. It's just that at some point some fuel got put on the wrong side of the belt, so it's ended up in the wrong place. So I. Th I think that's more or less everything I have to say about this. We've, we've still got the glass production running over here, but these all seem to have run out of whatever fu whatever fuel they, it is they use. Um, so yeah, they've got lot, plenty of quartz ore in there, but no, that's a module slot. There's is there a few? Oh, there's a fuel supposed to be brought in, or something supposed to be brought in through here. I think that's the molten glass output. There's an input output here, which okay, oh right, okay, so apparently. Despite not saying here what it requires, apparently this also requires hydrogen that's being brought in from over here. But there's not enough of it being generated at the moment, so the glass production is ground to a halt. So that's <laughs> that's another thing to look at before the near, before the next episode, I guess. So that is um, yes, that has been a, 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 a reasonably quick summary of uh, of what Mark has been up to. I think he's made some made some good progress. He's gone from having just the sort of the basic uh, flowers in a box science pack to having uh, having basic circuit boards. 
and now from there he can go on and well we'll see we'll see we'll see what the next thing is maybe maybe he'll maybe he'll have these uh, these um, Pi Science Pack ones being being made. Uh, there's quite a lot of different things going on in, in going into those. I don't fully understand everything that's going in there. Let's have some of the quick look at the uh, here it is this one the uh, basic substrate. So he needs cellulose. Let's quickly try and learn how to use um, factory planner. Pi Science Pack one. Uh, oops, make one of those. I don't know. Uh, so we want to click on that, it appears down here. So that's going to require the glassware. Uh, oh, there's many ways to make it. Let's use the basic one of those to start with. which is So that requires rubber stopper, molten glass and hydrogen. Okay, and we're also going to need to make these things, the basic substrate. And to make the cellulose, well we'll be doing it by the uh, yeah, wooden limestone, that's what he's currently using. Uh, incubated Petri dishes comes from uh, microorganism mines, oh lovely. <laughs> to make an incubated Petri dish. Um, from a petri dish, which requires the agar and uh, petri dishes, which I believe are made of glass and hydrogen. So yeah, there's there's lots of things going in here. Moss he's already got, and coal he's already got. So it's the, out of all of these things, I think the only thing that's here that I haven't seen being made is these incubated petri dishes, which require microorganism mines, um, and those. That's this one here. That's mechanical inserter, stone bricks, fluid mining, drill, air and So that's not too bad, actually. I think he's, he's not going to be a particularly big jump from um, from where he is now to making to making the uh, to making those science packs. Now it's probably going to require quite a lot of building and expansion to get all of the things into the right place. Maybe he's going to do it over here. Who knows? Uh, but I don't think there's anything in there that's going to be too difficult. And I say too difficult. This is on a on a pioneer scale of difficult. So it's probably going to be an absolute pain in the wasp name. But I don't think it's going to take him another 15 hours to get to that point. So um, I expect, I know, and I'm making this up entirely, and I'm, I may be, and I'm quite happy to be wrong about this. But I suspect the next video is going to, going to contain more than just the first Pioneer and Science Pack. But we shall see. Come back in, hopefully in a couple of weeks. We'll see how uh, Mark has been getting on. But come back in in a little while, and we'll and we'll see how he's been, how it's been going for him. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this um, del brief delve into the insanity of Pyanodons, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.